If you're tired of making wrong decisions that later haunt you and cause you shame, stay tuned until the end of this video. You will need all the lessons from today's Bible study to start making wise decisions that save you from shame. Hello, welcome to episode 11 of the Bible Story Lessons podcast, a concise yet insightful Bible study for meditating upon the Word of God day and night to make your ways prosperous and have good success. By the way, my name is Walter, and I am a Bible teacher. Today's episode is on the rather embarrassing story of Abraham, Sarah, and King Abimelech found in Genesis chapter 20. From it, you will learn spiritual and personal growth concepts that will help you make wise decisions and avoid tarnishing your name. Before we start, please note we encourage you to subscribe, like, comment, and share if you find this video a blessing. Now let's dive into our Bible study. Our chapter, Genesis 20, begins with Abraham journeying to the region of the Negev, where he settles between Kadesh and Shur, staying for a while in Gerar. Fearing for his life because of his wife Sarah's beauty, Abraham tells the people of Gerar that Sarah is his sister. This is a half-truth as Sarah is indeed his half-sister, but it is also a deception meant to protect himself. King Abimelech of Gerar, believing Sarah to be Abraham's sister, takes her into his palace. However, God intervenes and appears to Abimelech in a dream, warning him that he is as good as dead because Sarah is a married woman. Abimelech, who had not yet approached Sarah, pleads his innocence, explaining that he acted with a clear conscience and clean hands. God acknowledges Abimelech's integrity and tells him that he prevented him from sinning against Sarah. God instructs Abimelech to return Sarah to Abraham, who is a prophet and will pray for him so that he may live. If he does not return Sarah, Abimelech and all who belong to him will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summons his officials and informs them of the dream, causing them great fear. Abimelech then calls Abraham and confronts him, asking why he brought such guilt upon Abimelech's kingdom. Abraham explains that he feared for his life and believed there was no fear of God in Gerar. He also reveals that Sarah is indeed his half-sister, the daughter of his father, though not of his mother. Abimelech, taking Abraham's explanation into account, gives him sheep, cattle, male and female slaves, and returns Sarah to him. He also offers Abraham land to settle wherever he pleases. To Sarah, Abimelech gives a thousand shekels of silver to vindicate her before everyone and show that she is cleared of any wrongdoing. Abraham then prays to God, and God heals Abimelech, his wife, and his female slaves, enabling them to have children again. God had closed every womb in Abimelech's household because of Sarah, but now, with Abraham's intercession, they are restored. Lesson 1. Void ab initio agreements will cause you shame. There are contracts that are considered void ab initio, meaning void from the beginning. For instance, God's order from the beginning was that no man should separate a wife from her husband or vice versa. However, Abraham coerced Sarah into an agreement that was void from the beginning, as it separated them as a married couple. Their agreement was therefore void ab initio, hence God told Abimelech Sarah is Abraham's wife, which is in the present tense form, not was Abraham's wife, which is in past tense. Agreements or contracts that are void ab initio will cause you shame and losses even as Abraham and Sarah experienced. Lesson 2. Staggering at God's promises will cause you shame. Abraham's scheme revealed spiritual immaturity and unbelief in God's promise for a son through Sarah. If Abraham had not staggered at God's promise, he would not have considered the possibility of Sarah being taken by another man, no matter how powerful. Trusting God, would have led Abraham to leave everything in God's hands. However, he did not believe God could intervene and save him in his interactions with wicked mankind. Notwithstanding, God still showed Abraham his faithfulness by keeping pure and rescuing his wife Sarah from sexual sin. God's goodness most likely caused Abraham to feel ashamed for not trusting God earlier. Lesson 3. Faith without works is dead. Here is an interesting observation. Some years later when God asked Abraham to sacrifice his promised son, he demonstrated his changed faith in the faithfulness and power of God by almost sacrificing him. He believed he would somehow receive his son back from the dead. Abraham's actions now proved his faith in God, and God called him his friend. Contrast the afore with Sarah's situation, Abraham's actions did not prove his faith in God and it caused him to deceive Abimelech which when the truth came out, caused him shame. Faith without works is dead and causes shame because it does not produce results. When people look at your commitment to the things of God yet observe you are sways facing trouble after trouble, and struggling in life they end up mocking and asking, where is your God? 
For 25 years, Abraham did not have a son, yet he confessed he was the father of many nations which likely brought him shame. However, when his actions aligned with his belief he received a son at 100 years old, and his shame was dissolved. Lesson 4. Prove Your Love Manipulation Abraham asked Sarah to prove her love by marrying another man to save his life. Agape, the God kind of love, does not sin. If you have to prove your love through sinning, it is not real love or wisdom from heaven, it is earthly, sensual or even devilish and will cause shame. Many girls are asked by boyfriends to prove their love through premarital sex, and 99.9% .9 regret it and feel ashamed because they are often dumped and left feeling worthless. Sin always brings shame and anguish and is of the devil. Be prudent and avoid sin, even if it means cutting off relationships, to avoid regret, trouble and shame. Lesson 5. Incomplete Reasoning Some reasoning makes sense in the soulish realm but in the spiritual realm it is flawed. To Sarah it made sense to marry her husband's adversary to save Abraham's life. But due to being carnally minded and operating in the soulish realm, Abraham and Sarah forgot about the God factor. Their reasoning and consequently wrong conclusion came from incomplete information, causing them unnecessary anguish and shame. A human being is a spirit, lives in a body, and has a soul. When making life decisions, consider not only the physical and soulish realms, but also the spiritual realm, to make wise decisions. Lesson 6. Sugarcoating Sin and Unrighteousness To ease their conscience Abraham and Sarah termed their adulterous decision kindness, but it was in fact unrighteousness. Sugarcoating sin and unrighteousness leads to self-deception and an insensitive conscience. God seeks those who worship Him in spirit and truth. Deception hides, but the truth exposes the sinfulness of sin. Knowing the truth makes you free from sin. If Abraham had called his scheme adultery rather than kindness, he would not have pursued it, and he would have avoided shame. Lesson 7. Be perfect. Walking in truth makes you perfect. In a prior chapter, God commanded Abraham to be perfect as a condition for fulfilling his promise of many children. Giving away your wife due to fear of dying is surely not a trait of a perfect husband or man of God. Until Abraham reasoned perfectly, God did not give him the promised son, causing him shame. We learn perfection through trials, as mentioned in Hebrews 2 verse 10. Scheming and lying to circumvent trials cause you to miss opportunities for growth and receiving your promises from God. An heir who does not mature will not inherit his position and will feel ashamed when compared to others who have. Not maturing spiritually, mentally and emotionally will make you live life at a level you will not be proud of. Lesson 8. Presentation and Disclosure Concept Abraham told Abimelech that Sarah was his half-sister but he did not disclose that she was also his wife. In accounting, the presentation and disclosure concept ensures that one presents valid, accurate, and complete information. You must always disclose any relevant information to assist decision-making. Abraham presented a half-truth and did not disclose Sarah was his wife. He should have disclosed this fact to allow Abimelech to make an informed decision. If Abimelech had still taken Sarah knowing she was Abraham's wife, the fault would have been on him not on Abraham. Full disclosure saves you from shame. Lesson 9. Presumptions will bring you shame. Abraham presumed Abimelech did not fear God and deceived him. However, Abimelech was a man of integrity, and his nation was righteous. Presumptions cause unnecessary damage and destroy relationships. In 1 Kings 19, Elijah presumed he was the only righteous person left and ran away from ministry, fearing Jezebel. However, God revealed he had preserved 7,000 righteous people, debunking Elijah's presumption only act on thoughts and threats with evidence from two or three witnesses. Abraham did not have evidence of Abimelech's wickedness yet acted on his presumption. Accusing others without evidence is similar to witchcraft and causes you to inherit the spirit of fear, leading to wrong decisions and shame. Lesson 10. Flow in your anointing to cover past shame. Despite his failure Abraham was still recognized by God as a prophet. God's calling and gifts are irrevocable and he uses imperfect people for his purposes. God told Abraham to pray and heal Abimelech despite his wrongdoing. This shows that personal flaws do not negate one's spiritual office or anointing. Never therefore let shame from personal flaws stop you from ministering to others, especially if you have repented. By flowing in his office, Abraham healed Abimelech's household and his own shame. Walking in your calling moves you from glory to glory, not from shame to shame. Lesson 11. 
Restitution and Reconciliation Abimelech's restitution to Abraham and Sarah highlights the importance of making amends and seeking reconciliation when wrongs have occurred. The gift of silver to Sarah vindicated her. God ensures that those who are wronged are vindicated and their honor is restored. Never seek to prove your innocence as it can cause you to lose it. God knows how to turn your shame into joy. Trust him to handle it. Conclusion and Benediction Genesis 20 reminds us of human nature's complexities, the importance of faith and integrity, and God's unwavering protection and guidance and shameful effects of bad decisions we make. Let us strive to live lives of honesty, trust in God's promises, and be fervent in prayer, knowing that God is always at work to protect and fulfill his plans for us. Thank you for watching this podcast to the end. Please find links to useful resources in the video description section and on the pinned comment. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Until the next video, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.